Hi everyone. In the previous lecture we talked about how semiconductors sit on this knife edge between insulators and conductors because a semiconductor has an energy gap so technically it's an insulator but that energy gap is small enough so that the thermal energy of the electrons allows some of them to sit in the conduction band and allow the flow of current. Now this sensitivity allows us to control the electrical properties of a semiconductor through a process called doping. Doping is where we start with, say, a silicon substrate, which has four electrons per atom. And they bond together, much like graphite would with carbon. And so you've got this silicon crystal, and you infuse it with a certain amount of impurity, say boron. Boron has three electrons. So you swap a silicon atom with a boron atom, and you have a situation where the substrate, the way the electrons are patterned in the crystal, there's a little hole there. It's not that you have a positive charge because the boron atom has got the right number of electrons to balance, but you kind of have this uh, covalent bond type situation that wants to accept an extra electron. Because it, it kind of has this attractive nature to electrons, it's called a p-type material. Now, if you take a different uh, substance, say phosphorus, do the same kind of trick, phosphorus has five electrons. And so, in that case, you end up with an n-type material. You have too many electrons. You've got electrons looking for a place to go. So, what's interesting is you take these two materials, put them back to back. You get a p-n junction. This p-n junction here, what happens is this, the excess electrons over here looking for a place to go find it over in the p-type material. Right on this boundary, the electrons jump and fill in those um, missing holes. And so what happens is over time, an electric field starts to build up because now you truly do have negative charge, a net negative charge here, a net positive charge sitting here and that electric field builds up and blocks the flow of more electrons. You get an equilibrium situation which occurs and so what's cool about this p-n junction is you have kind of this natural situation in which this natural material which intrinsically has this 0.6 volt potential inside of it uh, for example for silicon. Now if we take a battery say and attach it to, uh, to this p-n junction. Suppose we put the positive terminal here. The positive terminal is going to attract these negative charges. Now these negative charges are also attracted to the positive charge due to the internal field. So they don't flow immediately. But once you get past this 0.6 potential threshold, you generate enough attractiveness to overcome the natural intrinsic attraction inside the material. So once we get past 0.6 volts in this forward biased mode, the electrons start to flow. Once these electrons leave, the excess electrons over here fill the holes. And then those electrons are filled by the battery and you have current that flows. So once the external voltage exceeds the internal voltage, you have the easy flow of current. That's called forward biasing this diode, which is what you call a p-n junction when it's in an electric circuit. Now let's suppose we flip the terminals of the battery. Okay? Put the positive terminal over here, the negative terminal over here, the positive terminal is going to attract these electrons, but these electrons are sitting here and if some of them flow, that's going to leave a net positive charge here. And that's going to keep the electrons inside. And so basically what happens is you have this huge resistance to the flow of current. In a sense, the battery voltage actually adds to the internal voltage and creates another stable situation in which the flow of the the flow of current happens instantaneously, but then stops. And so, in a sense, you kind of have this capacitor almost. And so, in reverse, 
the diode acts to block current. So that's the great thing about the PN junction is that um, in one direction it allows the flow of current very easily and in the other direction it, it blocks the current. And in order to overcome that you really have to uh, put in a lot of voltage.